Fund Supermont, your online gateway to unit trusts. Hello, Francis. What is your outlook on the European market for the second half of 2017? We're quite bullish on European equities, and I think that's, um, that's very important to note. Um, and the, there are and three big themes to that. The first is that the politics in Europe is getting a bit more stable. Last year we had some, some rather interesting events. We had the Brexit vote and, of course, the Trump election, which, although it's in America, it affects Europe as well. This year we've got quite a few elections coming through, but we're expecting market-friendly results. So we're expecting stable government to come through. We've already seen that in Holland and France, where we've seen um, some market-friendly politicians elected into power. We're expecting that in Germany as well. In the UK, there's a bit, a bit more uncertainty because the UK election was not very decisive. And of course, in the UK, we have Brexit as well, which is going to cause some uncertainty. So uh, we think that actually underweighting UK equities may not look, look, uh, look, look too stupid at the moment. Coupled with that, you've got strong economic growth, so maybe 20% um, maybe earnings growth coming through from Europe, which is positive. Um, and, um, and some good economic growth. Um, so um, that, that means that there's a, a good positive atmosphere in Europe. And European equities look a little bit expensive on a historic comparison, but not, crucially, compared to US equities and to other asset classes like bonds. In which European equity sectors do you see opportunities? Conversely, what are some sectors that you would be more cautious on? We tend to be cautious on sectors where it's difficult for companies to show competitive advantage and where companies generally don't control their prices and their, and their returns and their profitability. So I'm thinking there about commoditized sectors, things like the oil sector. We're not necessarily very bearish on the oil price, but it's very difficult for a company to charge an interesting price for the product or even to know what price they're going to charge because that's outside their control. We tend to prefer companies in areas where companies have competitive advantage and pricing power, and that typically occurs in areas like the industrial sectors, in healthcare, and in consumer sectors. Now, those weightings are not defined by our views on the macroeconomic situation, they're much longer term than that, and our, our approach is very long term. Several important elections have happened and will happen in Europe this year. What is your take on the recent political situation in Europe regarding its effect on the market? Um, well, I think that's getting better. It's getting better because um, the, the populist tide uh, which has tended to be treated with some nervousness, nervousness by markets, that seems to have been um, a, bit more, um, a bit more hesitant this year compared to last year. Um, and so we're, we think the political situation is getting better. Now, clearly there are risks. There are risks, uh, for example, because we don't entirely know how Donald Trump's program will be, um, will be implemented and what the effects on European and other companies will be because of that. And there are risks as well because of the Middle East and Russia where there is some uncertainty about uh, the political situation there. Apart from politics, are there any other potential risks in the European equity market in the rest of 2017? We think that politics is, does provide most of the risks. Um, yes, there are economic risks, but uh, the economic risks are most likely to come to the fore and, and give us a problem if there's a political um, implication to that. So we would tend, where there are risks, to focus generally on the politics, and then certain company-specific areas and, and, and sector-specific areas. There's always risks attached to that. And, and part of the good job of an active manager is to choose um, those areas where there's less risk or to be able to balance risk and return effectively. What are some countries that you favour particularly? Well, generally in Europe, because it's a unified market in the European Union, and obviously there are countries outside that, generally within that area, it's not sensible to look at individual countries because a lot of the companies are trading across borders and they're more international businesses and sometimes global businesses. Now, the exceptions to that are in Scandinavia and in the UK. 
Um, and there are certain elements of the UK which we're a bit more nervous about because of Brexit, areas of the domestic economy, and the UK is a little bit later cycle. It's not likely to grow the same way that Europe is. Scandinavia is a little bit different. Actually, the Scandinavian economies have been very stable, and we, we found, for example, um, p particular interest in the financial sectors in Scandinavia because they're relatively concentrated markets, good returns, and the economies are quite stable. Thank you very much for your sharing. Thank you too.